Hey there, welcome to a new segment that I'm calling Office Hours. Office Hours is where I'll be hopping on here from time to time, answering questions from the community. We're getting some great questions on YouTube. We're getting great questions inside of our System Builder Academy. If you're not a member already, go and join for free. SystemBuilderAcademy.com. Join in on the conversation, network with other ops professionals, and learn about Asana. There's lots of free resources here, so hop on in. But for this, we thought it would be better to build in public. We have great questions that are coming in, and I wanted to give you an opportunity to see how I think and how I would approach these questions. And so every week, I'm going to be hopping in and answering maybe three to four questions and kind of showing you how I would go about answering answering these. And so for this very first one, we've got three questions today. Um, and the first one comes to us from Lewis Brake. It says, thanks a lot, man. Love your videos. Could you please create a video of budget control in Asana, uh, kind of how to control estimated hours versus actual so that we can have an idea uh, how far we are from the cost baseline? Yeah, that's a great question, Lewis. I'm going to hop over to our demo space. I'm just going to build this out live. Um, if you don't want to watch all this, you can speed up but um, I'm just going to create some some stuff here and kind of go for it. So I'll keep this all really baseline. As we know, we're going to want to bring in our two custom fields for estimating time. We're going to pull those in right here. I'm going to put some estimated hours in here. So maybe this is three hours. This is two hours. And then for actual, I'm going to put in, you know, 30 minutes on this task. And then on this task, I'm going to put in maybe 45 minutes. Great. So we've got an hour and 15 minutes tracked there so far. So I guess, Lewis, unless you want to jump in and elaborate after this video is posted, we want to be able to track our budget. Right? And currently, there's no way to have a shared field from, say, the overview section that goes to our portfolio section. And so I'm going to show you how I would approach this. One way you can do it is you can have the budgeted hours here. And so let's say we've got 20 hours for this project, right? We can come back over here to our list view and we can do the same thing. I'm going to customize and I'm going to, maybe I have a budgeted hours already. No, we don't. Let's just pull that in right there. So let's just call that budget, create another task here. Uh, maybe we'll call this project budget like so. And then we've got our of course, at the dollar amount. Let me let me remove that one from the project. I'll go create a real one. Pull that in a second. We'll call this budgeted hours like so. And then this will be number. Yeah, I think we'll just keep it there for now. I'll pull that over so I can use it later. And then there we go. Let's put in our 20 hours. Great. So we've got our 20 hours and we can see at a glance, you know, what this looks like. But if you have multiple projects that you're managing this way, it's going to be pretty difficult to keep everything organized. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to our portfolio and I'm going to create just a new portfolio. First one, let's call this office hours. There you go. I'm going to add in our first office hours project and each week we'll just add to this. So great. Now what we're going to do is because we've started a fresh portfolio, pulled in our first uh, project into this, I'm going to go customize and I'm going to add our roll up fields so we can get our estimated time and our actual time inside this project, just like so. And then I'm also going to, as you just saw there, add another one called budgeted hours. All right, now we can see we have our estimated time so far for the project for those two tasks that we've created. If we had 20 hours, we'd obviously have more to do and there'd be more estimated time. And we can see our actual time. And now we can track week to week. So our project managers can now see week to week. How are we doing? Are we trending? You know, okay, are there any risks? And then we can have that reflected now in our status updates. I'm gonna go one step further because there's one other thing that I actually do inside of my Asana space and I do budget status and I say under and over I keep it really simple just like that and then as we're going through we can just check how are we doing with our budget are we under or are we over is it green or is it red and then it's super simple we go we do our status update we're on track and then I would go in and I would check the, the status there. I would make sure that we're also updating our other properties here and then make sure that everyone is kind of on the same page. So let's post that status update. Great, we're on track. 
And as my projects start to stack up, I can see how we're doing budget wise. So Lewis, hope that helped. There's lots of different use cases, but that's, you know, a couple ways that I would probably approach this project. And then again, if we go back to the overview, we can see our budgeted hours right there and any other relevant information. What I would still love to see is within this overview section to have the roll up that we just put in the portfolio where here we can see a roll up of estimated hours, actual hours, and then our budgeted hours. That would be really cool to have overview fields synced to the portfolio. But great question. Let's go to our second question here. Is there a way to show subtasks in the dashboards? Yes, there absolutely is. So go back to our demo space here for a second. I guess I got to build out some subtasks now. So let's do that. And maybe we'll populate some data. We've got subtask one, subtask two, and then over here, let's do that as well. Subtask one and subtask two. Great. So let's see, maybe we'll put in some information, add some assignees like so. And let me just make sure we fully understand this. There's probably some more information we're missing, but uh, Dina, I hope this helps a little bit. You probably figured this out by now. This was two years ago, but we do this because people are finding the channel all the time and have similar questions. So no doubt this question is going to come up again. So let's throw in some other estimated, you know, time. Probably don't need it for this demo, but we got it anyway. So let me just add this in. There we go. So now we have um, the opportunity to go check out the dashboard. So let's assume we have our different custom fields. You know, Asana does a great job of getting us started. We can tell us how many tasks are there. Maybe I'll complete some of these tasks. It tells us how many tasks we have overall, you know, what's complete, what isn't complete. And um, it gives us an opportunity to save some time really without having to build out all of those, you know, dashboards. And so we've got some completed tasks, some incomplete tasks, some overdue tasks, and then total tasks. And actually I'll go one step further because we don't have any due dates here. So let me do this one can be overdue. Maybe they're both overdue. Like so. Um, and then... Let's just put some random times or dates. Like so. This is what it would be like if we we're actually doing a workshop. So thanks for following along. Let's go back to our dashboard here. Great. So we've got three completed tasks, four incomplete, one overdue, and then um, seven total tasks within this. So obviously, as we know, this is a summary of all of our tasks. This is taking the, the top line three parent tasks, which is our project budget, our task one and our task two. And then it's also showing us the subtasks, the four subtasks that we've added in. So as you can see, there are no filters here. You can do this on any one of these charts, but the way that you're going to get the information you need is by going in and adding these filters. So you may have missed it if you're not using dashboards or reports, but now you can go in and select off subtasks where you only want to show subtasks and information relevant to subtasks, or you don't want to show subtasks. So now it's showing those top three tasks. And so how I would then name this is total, maybe parent tasks, Right, and then we can go in another feature that you may have missed if you weren't looking is now we can duplicate charts. And so now I can go back in and I'm just going to change that one filter. And this is going to be total sub tasks like that. And then of course we can have one that again is all tasks. So that's one of the ways that you can do it. Dina, I hope that answered that question. Check out dashboards if you haven't. There's lots of new things that Asana is updating all the time and they make it really simple for you to tinker around with it and get exactly the data that you need. All right. Last question for this very first segment of office hours. And if you're liking this, if you, if you like the questions, if you're wanting to learn Asana and you want to know more, um, like I said, join the System Builder Academy. We even have an event coming up. We're calling it Asana-thon. This is my very first uh, virtual conference. I'm so excited about this because I've been thinking about this for such a long time. And it's finally happening. So we've got a stellar lineup. There's going to be a panel discussion with myself, Joshua Zirkel, who is the head of global community 
community at Asana. We have Paul Miners, um, Bastien, Nadia from my team, all great Asana experts. Um, we're going to have a panel discussion. We're going to have breakout sessions where they're each going to be leading a discussion. So if you want to know more, head over to asanathon.com and register for free today. So let's get to our last question here. What are shortcuts on Mac? I'm a Mac user. Um, I don't know what these are on Windows. I mean, we kind of know, but I don't know what a Windows keyboard looks like. But um, if you're not aware, in the bottom left of your Asana, you've got this little help tab. You click on that, scroll down, you can go to keyboard shortcuts. They're all there for you. Absolutely everything you could need around Asana. And there, there's lots of opportunity um, to explore this and play around with it a little bit. So some of my favorites, if you were to go back to the list view here and you know I'm on this task, if I press tab M, it automatically assigns it to me. And then tab B updates the date for us and opens up that date field. Tab P, which I use often, is something that I'll do for multi-homing tasks um, to other projects. Tab C gets you into the comments space so you can start commenting right away. All right, and then if you want to complete a task, you got to select that task and then you just press command and enter and it will complete that task for you. So there's lots of use cases. If you're unfamiliar and you forget about that little help shortcut right there, you can come in here and it will show you the most used shortcuts. One that I love to use and I'll often tell people is the follow up shortcut on the Mac shift tab F like that and it creates a follow-up task for you and so if you've assigned this parent task to someone else you need to remember to go back to it you can easily do so by doing the shift tab F and then it will create a copy of that task right here that you can go back to and then you can assign this due date for whatever you want to if you want to have some fun with this as well tab B um, does exactly what it says tab B if you're a cat lover and then tab V um, if you're a dog lover which I am you can just do this all day long Look at all those cute puppies. And then as soon as you click, it's gone. So hope you found this helpful. This is, again, our first office hours. Submit your questions, comment on this video, ask whatever questions you want. We'll be literally pulling them from these videos. If you don't want to comment on YouTube or you don't have an account, um, no problem. Head over to the System Builder Academy and ask the question there, register for free. And don't forget, if you want to learn more about Asana, if you want to hear from industry leading experts on how they use Asana and what the future of work um, will look like head over to asanathon.com and register for the event thanks for watching as always and we'll see you in the next video bye for now